Alright, what up y'all, it's Matt. So I'm working on the good old Gammar tractor today, and I gotta get the diesel tank cleaned up before I can put this thing completely back together. So I'm making good progress on the engine rebuild, but I got the uh, diesel tank laying over here on the ground, and we're gonna have to treat it because it's not doing too good on the inside. So let's go check it out. Alright guys, so I got some products here y'all need to check out. It's uh, concrete and metal prep. It's basically 30% phosphoric acid, and they sell it as a metal etchant. Too. Um, I got this at Home Depot. It works great. I already did it, but I didn't film it. Unfortunately, I forgot Basically, it had a bunch of rust down in here um, At the bottom at the lowest point right there you can see it had rust all on the inside right here and um, Basically, I guess the water sunk and the diesel floated on top of it and it started rusting so I had to drain all the diesel out and I put this stuff in here and then I taped it up with some Mastic HVAC tape because it seals really well and I had it laying around. Put that in here, sloshed it around and it dissolved all the rust and it treated the whole inside and it's flawless on the inside now. So I need to protect it. I went down to Amazon and I got this. Pour 15 fuel tank sealer. Stops rust, corrosion, and leaks. It's basically like a paint coating for the inside of your fuel tank. Um, and it's supposed to work extremely well. You can see, you can read it there. Resistant to all fuels, alcohol is out of this, professional use. That sucks because we're not professionals. Um, so basically, I'm not reading the whole thing. Basically, we're going to shake it up, dump it in here, tape stuff up, slosh it around, and then drain whatever's left back into the can so let's get it set up let's do this thing and it should stay treated for a very long time and it should last so that we don't have any more rust in our diesel and there's little things like this you're gonna have to plug up all right let's get it guys all right guys so i want to show y'all before and after let's see before you can see all the rust in there, it's just surface rust, but I got the bulk of it off. You should have seen it before, but uh, that's before. And then we'll be back after we get this thing treated and we'll see the after. Man, that's a wild turkey around these parts. They call me the turkey tamer.
All right, guys, so let's get an after here. It's still drying, but I want to see up in here. So you can see down in there, it looks pretty good. You can see the texture is kind of off because I tried to brush it on and it kind of messed it up. So I had to like recoat it a little bit, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Honestly, the sides are looking really good. The bottom's probably just going to be a little messed up, but that's fine. So we got to let it sit for four days and cure for four days before we can put any fuel in here. But uh, it's looking good to me, guys. All right, guys, so it's got this fuel level um, gauge thing here. And I just wanted to check it because I, I took it apart and I cleaned it out. But uh, I want to see if it's working. So it's basically like resistance, right? So I got the leads hooked up here. And I'm going to move it around and you can watch it. And let's see what it does. Let's see if it works. All right, so it's doing something. I'm not sure if it works, like if it's given the right reading, that's gonna go back to the dash. But uh, it looks like it's staying pretty steady. So if we move it there, you can see it's kind of hovering around 40 ohms. And then if we move it some more, 30 ohms. If we move it some more, it jumps way up, that didn't write. 27 ohms. It's doing something, I don't know, so. Uh, my lead keeps popping off here. I guess we're just going to have to hook it back up when we put it back in the tank and see if it works or not on the dash. If not, we can just look in there, but it looks like it's kind of working. It's got, it's got 60 ohms right there, uh, like that. And then, you know, we bring it all the way back down. 18 ohms. So it looks like it works. I don't know. We're going to have to put it back in the tank it just bolts up to the top and it's got a gasket once we put it back and get the tractor back assembled uh we should know if this thing works or not all right right here is where it reads the fuel level on the tractor apparently so you can see it's got an e and an f i bet you the e is like 18 ohms and the f is like 70 or 80 ohms so you know the range in between it'll tell us uh how much diesel's in the tank if it works right if it's jumping all over the place you know the whole time when we're running it probably just going to disconnect it and just get a visual on the diesel level because that sending unit thing is so old um you know probably not worth replacing probably pretty expensive so that's what we're going to do once we get this thing back together all right y'all so that's it for the video tips just make sure you keep the thing moving you know and coat it all over the place don't let it sit in one spot and puddle up because then it's going to start bubbling it could bubble don't brush it on don't get a brush and get down in there and try to do it because i tried it on some spots and it messed it up so just coat it around and drain the excess um it almost it's almost like you don't want to pour the whole tank in there just enough to coat it because when i poured the whole tank in there i couldn't get the excess out i had to coat it back and forth every which way it took forever so maybe don't pour the whole the whole uh little can in there maybe just you know try to get enough i don't know but uh, other than that, it should be pretty good, guys. I'll check y'all out on the next video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below for the engine rebuild video. I'm almost done with that. I'll check y'all out later. Peace.